Welcome back to the shop. I've been pretty busy working around here. I've uh, replaced all the fluorescent light bulbs in the shop, so it's hopefully a lot brighter. My videos will be brighter. I've been working on my attic access ladder that I've built. I framed out an access hole for it, and I made a latch to securely hold the ladder to the ceiling, rather than just using some wire to tie it up there. I've built my chaos gear table here, it was an old spool, and the casters that I took the rust off are sitting underneath of it so I can move it around the shop. And uh, today I want to build using this flashlight and some of the pieces from my metal, metal etching setup, I want to build something that I can just plug a battery in and start etching or something else if I can use the setup for a different project. I was going to use the fan that I used in the metal etching but I think it died so it's going in the garbage. I wanted to try and use a larger fan maybe put it there or something but you know what? It's a flashlight. It's got a light bulb in it. And the light bulb would serve the same purpose as the phone as the fan. So keep it simple, stupid. I'm using the flashlight. I'm gonna take it apart, hook these pieces up on in between the flashlight and the switch. So let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> Well, flashlight's really easy to take apart. All you gotta do is unscrew this piece, take out those pieces, take out the bulb, and then you just have these six screws to take out, and it comes right apart. All right, so the screws are out. Now I'm just gonna pry it apart. That comes off, this comes off. It's got a little gasket here, and uh, there was, when I first took it apart, there was one of those little magnetic security devices inside of it right there. And I'm going to pop this apart. Pull that guy out. Now, inside, we've got our negative and our positive. And because I want the power flowing through the negative to go through the light and then come back, and I also want to keep the use of the switch there, I'm actually going to just come between right here and right here, probably cut it, and then I'll add my two wires in between. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I need to get rid of the trigger because it's in the way. So I'm going to take that out, take the spring out also. And then the red wire, I'm just going to want to go underneath of where it passes through that. So cut about right there where that bend is, I guess. Strip off some wire, and since this is going to be coming from the positive side, I'll go ahead and I'll hook up my white one for this, because I don't have a red wire made and ready to go. This one works pretty well. All right, that's that'll work. I hope the wire might might be too large. Well, I couldn't find any smaller wire nuts, so I'm just going to take these off. And I'm just going to use some electrical tape.
Trying to get a tight wrap on there. I'm going to do that with the other one too. Alright, so I just used a razor knife. I took all the wires out. And I notched here a little bit. And as you see, the black wire is already fed through. And I've got it underneath. Well, I'm going to take that back out because I need to do the same with the wire the white wire. I've got it fed around here and I've got that notched out. And I've got it coming out right here instead of down here because I realized it'd be easier just to wrap it around the handle to store it and there's no sense in going all the way down here for all that. So it's pretty tight. I made this So there's one of the wires in, and uh, I also went ahead on this other half and notched right there so the white wire can fit, because this hole I couldn't get it deep enough, so I've just got this notched out a little bit so when the white wire feeds through there, and I probably need to also notch out that support piece. So I'm gonna get this I'm gonna get the rest of this put back together. Or well notch that out, then start putting it back together. Alright, I got that notched out, so it's gonna have a clean shot through here when it because it can't go down too far right here. So it's gotta come into this space and then it'll come out right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in it back together won't be too tough. I'll do that real quick. Go ahead and Put the spring back on, get the trigger, all right, so I'm going to put this other half on now, that went together really easily, be in place, wiggle the trigger, yeah, that's good. All right, there's nothing coming through the battery part. Yeah, there we go. All right, so all I gotta do is put the screws back in and this is ready to go. Well, it's time to try it out and I just cut out a quick little test pattern here to see how it works. I've got salt and vinegar on this side and I've got the positive side connected there, negative side here, the flashlight, is on and it's bubbling already. The flashlight's running. All right, here's my test piece, and I just finished with it. I'm gonna disconnect that. And, and the brighter you get the light, the better it's gonna work. So here we go, moment of truth. <laughs> it works pretty well. Just got to get it all cleaned off. Well, it turned out fantastic, and I've got the wires wrapped around the base of the handle, and I've got the two metal leads clipped together, which means it has all the functionality of the flashlight it had. And uh, if you want to do metal etching this way, I would highly suggest doing this. It's lost no functionality of the flashlight itself, and you have the ability to met, to etch the metal. And my test piece right here has come out fantastic. And uh, if you want to go ahead and click to subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.